What's up guys, it's your friendly neighborhood van man, Matty Watson, and I'm here today to show you how to keep people from stealing your pucks at the hockey rink. We're gonna do this by giving them a spray paint and then following that up with some Sharpie to get them looking nice and cute. Um, I have one extra spare one, this guy right here, that I'll be doing special for my teammate. And you get ready to see his reaction when he sees it. I'm also gonna put these pucks through a few hours of practice so you can see exactly how much wear and tear is gonna come off your spray paint job. You want some comedy? What? You got some comedy? Huh? You want a comedy? It's bad. What's in comedy? All right, step one is choosing your paint. I have got a paint and primer combo here that uh, says it's fast drying indoors and outdoors, good for wood, metal, and more. As spray paint can easily permanently damage your clothing, I recommend putting on an outfit that you don't care all that much about. Oh, is that why he's wearing the Leafs hat? I also recommend avoiding painting these pucks on pavement or in your van, and ideally on some sort of cardboard service or something that is easily disposable uh, post-project. I've given the pucks a little little clean with my water bottle. All right, this can says to shake vigorously for one minute until the mixing ball begins to rattle. All right, that's starting to sound pretty good to me. Let's give this a go. All right, so the can says to wait 20 minutes between coats, but I think I actually have a way to speed up this process. If I'm not mistaken, I got this little beauty right here. They call this the, uh, the venti fan. It's actually a cool little gadget. It's got a little light there, different levels. The fan portion's actually got an extendable neck. So it's useful in many locations, but for us, we're gonna keep it on its lowest level and get it to dry some pucks. This is actually pretty nifty. While the paint's drying, I was like, hey, why not charge this phone a little bit so I can have enough juice to finish this video? And by golly, this fan's charging this phone too. It's pretty cool. If you guys want to get a hold of one of these portable venti fans, I will put the link for them in the description. All right, it's been 20 minutes. The ball's already moving in there pretty good. Let's get it on our next layer. But I remember watching a video where Willie Nylander spray paints the, uh, the bottom part of his stick. And being I have uh, a stick and uh, some spray paint, why not paint a stick? So it's only been about 45 minutes, but uh, everything feels pretty dry to the touch and I can handle it without getting paint on myself. So let's flip them over and do the other side. Let's give these beauties one more coat, then it's time to decorate. While that's drying, I figured I would show you how us hockey players uh, practice hockey in, in Australia. This thing right here is a handy glaze polycarbonate sheet. And this is what I've been using to practice. It is much cheaper than any of those hockey tiles that you can buy online. And I find it equally as effective. So the paint can says to put these guys someplace safe for 24 hours that we can get to decorate. So here we are roughly 24 hours later. I got my pucks which worth noting, don't dry them on cardboard. The whole point of this exercise is so that when you go to the ring, people throw all their pucks on the ice, you end up leaving with your own. You don't want people stealing your pucks. That's the whole point of this thing. So I decided to make it nice and easy. I wrote Matt's puck on the front part of it. On the back, I wrote puck off. Let's go test these things out. See how much damage we do to them. Here's our pucks. Look a nice and neat. I like the most is this freaking stick, man. Look at this. All right, so I've shot them 20 times each. That's 200 puck shots. They look pretty good, man. Like, uh, sure, this one here, the corner of the M is coming off, but hey, at least it's not the corner of the P. Something I did notice was originally they were a little bit sticky from paint, but now that I've been firing them into the into the grass and into the dirt and into the fence, they're, uh, they're starting to feel and slide a lot better. Well, you can tell I hit my mark at least once. Here's the pole I usually use. It's not like pucks don't usually do that. Now all we gotta do is take these beauties to the ring, see if anybody steals them. All right, teammate Justin, I made you something, buddy. <laughs> That's sick. You see what the back says? I cheer for the Bruins, but I'm a constant leaf fan. <laughs> <F> you. <laughs> 
So Justin and I took my 10 pucks and mixed them in with a bunch of others for an hour training session. So these things are about two to three hours now into getting knocked around. And you can see there's a little bit of damage, but ultimately this whole process was a success. I went into that rink with these 10 pucks and I left with the exact same 10 pucks. They're easily identifiable, unique to me, so people know they're mine, and even on the off chance, someone were to pick one up and think about pocketing it, they would read the puck and realize they can politely puck off. Come on. Thanks for checking out this video, buddy. If you liked it, just give it the gentlest of thumbs up, throw the channel a sub, and then just send this video to a friend. And of course, a huge shout out to my sponsor, Super Sparrow. I'm a big fan of any company that says that their product is going to last for life, and Super Sparrow does just that. They've also got a ton of different sizes. They've got bottles made of different materials. And of course, they got a ton of different patterns, some new ones too that they're gonna be sending to me and I will show you those soon. Go to supersparrow.com and use code MATT25 to get 25% off your entire order. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next week.